Brexit means the UK can finally take back control of its fishing waters, something the Faroe Islands have done for years. The Faroe Islands, a group of tiny islands in the North Atlantic between the UK and Iceland, are self-governed within the Kingdom of Denmark. Due to its location it has significant fishing rights, which it needs because much of its economy relies on this industry, with 90% of its exports consisting of fishery products. Unlike the rest of Denmark, it is not part of the EU, as explicitly asserted by both Rome treaties. Indeed, the Faroe Islands decided not to join the European Economic Community EEC, the precursor to the EU, specifically because of fishing. In this way, it split from the rest of Denmark in a hugely significant fashion. The relations between the Faroe Islands and the EU are governed by a Fisheries Agreement 1977 and a Fair Trade Agreement 19 The Faroe Islands' main reason for remaining outside the EU is disagreements about the common fisheries policy, a form of which dates back to 1970, but was fully adopted in 1983. This policy would mean they would have to give away large fish quotas in their own waters to other EU countries. This eerily echoes the arguments of Brexiteers, who firmly reject the EU's fishing quotas that have prevented UK fishermen getting the most out of fish stocks within British limits. It is also argued that the Faroe Islands do not want decisions on fishing to be made so far away, as they would have little say in the EU due to their small population. They fear they would disappear into the vastness of the EU similar to the fate of the Shetland Islands. Documents from 1972 unearthed at the National Archives by Express, have revealed that the Faroe Islands were wary of the bloc's intentions regarding fishing in the early 70s and were promoting, for example, there was pressure from the Republican Party in the Faroe Islands to extend its fishing limits from 12 miles to 70 miles, partly in response to Iceland extending its limits to 50 miles. Crucially, it would not let EEC countries fish within these limits, which seriously worried the British government. This is because the UK entered the EEC in 1973 after Prime Minister Edward Heath signed the Accession Treaty a year before. One official wrote, My latest information with regard to the Faroese position is that they may well not join Denmark in becoming a member of the EEC and if the Faroese do not join but extend their fishing limits to 70 miles as it seems they have in mind to do, the extended zone from 12 to 70 miles will not be open to fishing by EEC members, including the present applicant countries, as much of the British trawler fleet prosecutes fishing in these waters, their exclusion from considerable areas areas of such fishing grounds would pose a serious threat to the inshore fleet, as a number of these larger trawlers will be forced to prosecute fishing on this will operate to the very great detriment of the inshore fleet, because the two methods of fishing, particularly seine netting and trawling cannot be successfully carried out on the same area. The Faroe Islands extending its limits to 70 miles would mean it would include plentiful cod fishing grounds and would preclude them from entering the EEC, a double win from the Republicans' point of view. However, other parties rejected the idea because of the damage it would do to Faroese fishermen if other countries followed suit and extended their limits. However, British officials were concerned that if the Faroe Islands extended its limits to 70 miles, they would not be open to fishing from countries in the EEC, which would damage British fishing interests. However, they did acknowledge that Faroese and Danish interests were often in conflict when it came to fishing, perhaps the reason. Since then, the Faroe Islands have kept a distance from the EU, claiming it would only consider membership if Norway and Iceland also joined. In 2006, Faroe Islands Prime Minister Joannes Idisgaard said the region would not join the EU for the same reason they did not follow Denmark in back in 1973. He told EU Observer during a two-day visit to Brussels, the reason back then was that we could not live with the common fisheries policy because if we lose our fish we have nothing left. It is the same reason today. Indeed, fishing accounts for almost half of the GDP of the country with a population of around 51,000. He added, if Iceland and Norway join the EU, then I think the Faroe Islands might join as well. But right now, there are no signs that they will become like the Faroe Islands, these two European countries that are next to large bodies of water with plentiful fish stocks have opted out of sharing them with others. 
Now, the UK too can benefit from owning its own waters. The Faroe Islands also benefits from not being tied to EU rules, regulations and quotas. For example, when the EU and Russia imposed reciprocal trade sanctions on each other during the war in Don Base in 2014, the Faroe Islands began exporting large amounts of fresh salmon to Russia, filling the gap and boosting its economy. Similarly, the UK can now benefit from making its own trade decisions.